Manavoid Entertainment, a video game development company based in Montreal, Canada. A few years ago, we came to Kickstarter to announce our studio's first commercial game, Epic Manager, where, with your help, we managed to launch a great management RPG title on Steam for PC and Mac. Today, we're excited to announce our studio's newest project, Steamboat Billy, The Curse of the Leviathan, an adventure RPG that is inspired by games like Zelda Wind Waker, and Pokemon, but rendered in an art style that mixes 1930s black and white cartoons with anime-like characters. Hey Billy! So, as we were initially designing the game, it became clear to us that it had to be made in an art style that would bring players back to a moment in time where they could relate to this child, Billy. Billy sees the world fade to shadow after the Leviathan curses it, and now Bal is compelled to try and save everyone with the innocent courage that only a kid could have. We've always been big fans of old American cartoons and specifically Disney style. So it was a natural fit for the game and really enhanced the nostalgia effect we were going for. Also, the play on black and white versus color allows us to do a lot of cool things with the game different themes and mechanics. We did, however, want to distance ourselves from other games who recently used similar art style, like Carphead or Bendy and the Ink Machine. So we also added some Japanese anime traits to our design characters, and we are using modern animation techniques and VFX to enhance our game's visuals. We've built Steamboat Billy around four pillars of design that we knew would make a great game. Exploration, crafting, combat, and color. For exploration, we use the sea and islands as a setting for the game. The sea is interesting for exploration because you only have a vague idea of the direction in which you're going which allows you to feel a true sense of exploration when you stumble upon a wreckage, a lighthouse, or an island that hasn't been visited before. There is also something very cool about the fact that you never quite know what goes on under the sea, something that we've linked to our fishing mechanic to create exciting encounters throughout your travels. There will also be treasure maps to be found in the game, and if you can find the right area to fish or dig, you will be able to obtain unique items, treasure, and more. As you explore the game, you will find raw materials that you can use to repair Star Harbor, your home, which acts as a sort of hub world where you can craft houses, upgrade your ship, change the creature you want to fight beside you, and interact with the NPCs you've found so far. The crafting decision you make in Star Harbor will have an impact on comeback strategy in the game, because what you build will end up helping you in some way or another down the line. For example, if you build the shipyard first, you'll be able to upgrade your ship faster, but if you build the item shop, then you have access to potions earlier. To break from the combat system seen in most traditional turn-based RPGs, we've added quick time events to dodge, block, and do critical damage when fighting with the Leviathan's chroma-crazed creatures. This makes combat feel much more dynamic and engaging while keeping the fun strategy aspects of traditional turn-based combat encounters. Every time you hit a chroma-crazed creature, 
color starts to leak out of it until it transforms into a tiny creature that you can then capture, collect, and add to your team. As color leaks out of a creature, Billy's boat will absorb it. Once you've absorbed enough color, Billy will be able to unleash special attacks with significant effects. If you manage to execute the quick time events correctly, of course. One of the game main themes is color. Artistically, the play on black and white versus color allows us to create a lot of cool moments where we juxtapose old-fashioned image and effects versus modern ones. This way, we can highlight moments and emotions like they did in movies like Pleasantville or Sin City. Color is also a mechanic in our game. Each creature tip will be associated to a color and that color will be stronger or weaker against others, adding the overall strategy of how you approach a fight and level up your creatures in the game. Finally, by using chroma crystals that you can find while exploring the world, you'll be able to gradually restore color and items, areas, or people in the game. Choosing when and how you restore color will also give you a different advantage in the game. So far, we've invested our own funds to bring the game up to this point. But we really need the help of the Kickstarter community, you guys, so that we can make the game that we've envisioned a reality. But we are mostly coming back to Kickstarter because we understand the value of creating a community of people who are interested in playing a game before it releases. We've lived it with our first game, Epic Manager, and we've seen it while helping our friends at Borealis Games during the closed beta for Mages of Australia. Having a group of people engaged in bringing a game to its full potential during development, it's crucial to its success. Steamboat Billy is a passion project for us, and we are very excited to bring this project to the public eye for the first time with the help of Kickstarter. All we're missing now is for you to join us as we work towards bringing this game to PC and consoles throughout the next year. On behalf of Manavoid, we really want to thank you for taking the time to look at this video and checking out the Kickstarter page. Feel free to leave your comments, questions, and anything you want to talk about in the comments section of the Kickstarter page, through email, or our social media. We really hope you join us on this adventure and you help us bring color back into the world. Thank you.